Hello, Buzz Killers. It's the professor here with your mini myth for the week. It's about Patrick Henry and his give me liberty or give me death speech. Patrick Henry, as you may know, was one of the great early American heroes. In 1773, Thomas Jefferson, Richard Henry Lee, and Patrick Henry convinced their fellow Virginians to join with the other colonies in opposing British rule. The most famous thing he did, however, and the thing which has passed down through generations of American history books, is give a speech to the Virginia House of Burgesses, showing his level of dedication to the cause of the the overall colonies. On the 23rd of March, 1775, the Burgesses were debating whether to mobilize the colonial militia against British forces. Patrick Henry stood up in that assembly and said, Gentlemen may cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war is actually begun. The next gale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand we here idle? What is it that gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? And then, buzz killers, came his crowning statement. Forbid it, almighty God, I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. The House of Burgesses erupted into cheers and passed the mobilization resolution overwhelmingly. Ever since, Patrick Henry's give me liberty or give me death line has been used as a staple of American patriotism memorized by school children and quoted endlessly, endlessly buskillers by politicians. But you guessed it, killers. There's no evidence that Patrick Henry ever said, give me liberty or give me death. In fact, there's no direct and reliable record of his speech at all. In 1817, 42 years after the speech was given, a prominent Virginia politician named William Wirt published a biography of Patrick Henry, and he wrote the speech. That is, Wirt wrote the speech. He wrote it based, he said, on the recollection of St. George Tucker, another old Virginia politician who had been there in the House of Burgesses in 1775. Tucker said later that, quote, in vain should I attempt to give any idea of his speech, unquote. meaning that he could not remember it verbatim, nor could he remember the gist of what Patrick Henry had said. All he could remember was that it was exciting. Historians to this day debate whether the speech was mostly the work of St. George Tucker or William Wirt, but Wirt was writing at a time, that is the early 1800s, when the Founding Fathers were being celebrated and deified by all kinds of biographers. Founding Father generation was starting to die off, the country was starting to expand, and its first histories were being written and published. Many of these histories and biographies were exaggerated or based on very slender evidence, if any at all. So most scholars think the speech is more a product of early 19th century patriotism rather than the original thing. Talk to you next week, Buzzkillers. Killers.